The owner realized they weren't able to take care of them anymore, living in deplorable conditions. Eight dogs seized in a Western Kentucky hoarding case are brought to Lexington to find their forever homes. Coming up, we'll tell you about a Lexington laundromat offering a free meal and washing and drying services to low-income families. They're just terrible to these people, to the elderly, and they scare them. Uh, they have no conscience. One woman is furious about what conmen did to an elderly aunt. We'll tell you what happened coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening. They were found in terrible conditions. More than 50 dogs rescued from a Western Kentucky home are getting a second chance. Rescuers found those dogs living among trash at an Ohio County home. Deputies say the dogs did not have clean water and were suffering from parasites. Now, eight of those dogs are in Lexington looking for some new homes. Whitney Wetzel has the latest on their road to recovery in our top story at 530. Out of 54 dogs living in deplorable conditions in Ohio County, eight arrived in Lexington late last night to begin the search for their forever home. Rescuers recently found the 54 dogs living in and around an Ohio County home among trash and their own waste. Authorities say the dogs' only water source was dirty rainwater in broken buckets. <laughs> Eight of the dogs brought to Lexington's Humane Society are now well on their way to recovery. Officials there say one dog has heartworm disease and the others likely have social issues. Once fostered and socialized, the dogs will then be available for adoption. We are able to reach out to other communities and help animals in crisis situations. Throughout each year, we try and rescue at least a thousand animals from crisis situations, and um, we are able to continue to do that because of the support from the community. And absolutely, we want to make sure that we can help the animals. The other dogs taken from the home in Ohio County have been taken to other humane societies throughout the state. In Lexington, Whitney Wetzel, WKYT. Officials at the Lexington Humane Society say they're able to take in more animals with help from the community. And we have a link to their website on WKYT.com where you can donate to the shelter. Lexington police have arrested a man they've been looking for in connection with a murder that happened last year. 20 year old Martavius Bell is accused of shooting 51 year old Stacy Lilly in the chest in November on East 7th Street. Lily later died at UK Hospital. One witness had told us he heard the two arguing over money right before the shooting. A former teacher faces sex abuse charges tonight, stemming from an incident more than 30 years ago. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Harrison County. State police say 57-year-old William Hyatt of Cynthiana is accused of sexually abusing a child under the age of 12 on four separate occasions between 1979 and 1981. The Board of Education says Hyatt was a teacher in Harrison County from 1992 to 1998. Hyatt faces four counts of first-degree sexual abuse. In in Leslie County, a grand jury has indicted a man for a deadly shooting that happened months ago. Gavin Wells charged, is charged with manslaughter instead of murder for the August death of Chris Sizemore. Police say Wells got into an argument with Sizemore and Sizemore's brother in the Wooten community. They say Wells then shot the men killing Sizemore. In Rowan County, a man accused of causing a crash nearly three years ago has finally been sentenced. Today, Zachary Wallace of Moorhead pled guilty to reckless homicide for the wreck that killed Michael Henderson. Originally, a grand jury indicted Wallace on a manslaughter charge. The plea agreement called for a sentence of two years, but instead Wallace will serve four years under a diversion program. After some chilly temperatures this week, we're tracking some fantastic weather for your weekend. We could see temperatures surge into the 50s, maybe even a little higher. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at your weekend forecast. Chris? Up, up, and away. Those temperatures today, Sam, started out in some areas into the single digits. Now we're warming it toward the low 40s. And as Sam mentioned, the 50s are up next. Take a look outside across the land as we're now officially into that weekend. Friday evening upon us, mix of sun and some clouds across southern. Kentucky, mainly cloudy skies now. Lexington, Richmond, into Frankfort, though. Uh, sun shining brightly on my old Corbin home right now. 41 degrees for our friends and neighbors across parts of southern Kentucky. Here we go with the clouds coming back into town. 
Not a complete overcast. A couple of holes in there showing up on Live First Alert Defender, which, by the way, has no precipitation. Those clouds are on the leading edge of milder air. Look at Nashville, 52 degrees right now. 52 Memphis, Columbia, Missouri at 55. That's the air we're getting in on as we go into our Saturday. So the mild up is on the way, and that gives us obviously a much better weather forecast as we head into Saturday and most of Sunday. I say most of Sunday, guys, because I'm tracking a change into town before the weekend is over. We'll break down what to expect with your hour by hour forecast when I come back in about 10 minutes. Some children were taken to the hospital after a crash involving a school bus, a police vehicle, and a semi this morning in Louisville. Police say the semi rear ended a Jefferson County public schools bus, which then rear ended an unmarked Shively police car. There were 36 students on board the bus at the time. 20 students and the bus driver were taken to nearby hospitals and they were all released by this afternoon. The students who were not hurt were loaded onto another bus and taken to school. The other drivers were not injured. In Pendleton County, the 911 center is putting together a benefit to help one of their dispatchers after a crash. Back in September, Teresa Rick and her son were involved in a crash that left them stranded overnight. After months of recovery, Rick is returning to work on February 16th. And on the 21st, there will be a benefit and a celebration to help Rick and her son rehab rehabilitate. The benefit will be at Plum Creek Christian Church, and the public is invited. It is one less thing that some people need to worry about. The Lexington Laundromat is starting a new program where low income families can wash their clothes for free. Mike Linden went to the Laundry Connection today, where the program is offered on most Fridays. It's a story that's new at 5 30. On most Fridays at the Laundry Connection on Newtown Pike in Lexington, low income families can wash their clothes for free through the Free to Be Clean program. We want to. Someone else to express the joy that we have of giving, the joy of lending, the joy of helping somebody else who can't help themselves. And it's a real wonderful joy that fills our hearts when we're able to serve in our community. More than 50 people showed up last Friday for the kickoff of the program. Everybody struggles. I was homeless. Um, my kids were homeless at one time or another, and they needed the help. And there was that one person that stood out and, and felt them. By signing up into the Free to Be Clean program, each family is given two full wash cycles as well as two free dry cycles, not to mention a free hot meal as well. These are the washers that we use. We corn the washers, or place the corns in. We have detergents that they can use. The services provided are funded by donations, but the ministry needs help from the community. Food, clothes, or even laundry money. It's a relief knowing I can be part of something like this. It's a blessing. Knowing that because it was given to me, I can give to others. An appointment is needed to participate in the program. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Well, that is certainly a great idea. Now, to sign up for the program, just go to our website, WKYT.com, and click on this story for more information. It's a real wake up call for every family with an elderly relative. Con men are now resorting to threats. In their efforts to extort money from senior citizens. They're just terrible to these people, to the elderly, and they scare them. Uh, they have no conscience. They just want money, money, money. That's all they want. Sharon Hansen is frustrated and angry. Her aunt lost more than $100,000 to thieves who preyed on her vulnerability. It all started when her aunt received a phone call after a local flood left many people homeless. He needed help. He needed someone to buy a telephone and send it to his brother uh, so that they, uh, brother could work on it and that the day could, two of them could talk to each other. Hansen's 83-year-old aunt bought a phone and sent it to the address she was given. Then she got another call. She supposedly got a call that she had won the California lottery for $1.4 million or whatever. But she had to pay the taxes on it first. So she went to the bank to get $4,500. Hansen says she and her husband tried to intervene, questioning her aunt about the lottery. Did you go to California? She said, no. Did you buy a California lottery ticket? No. He says, then what makes you believe you won? If you don't play, you can't win. And she was just confused about it. So confused that her aunt, a retired nurse, continued to send more money when the con men called. What she had done was bought these green dot cards from Walgreens. 
and then she'd bring them home. And she, when they called the next time, then she would give them the number. When cash is put on a card and the card number is used, the cash is gone. This happened over and over again. At one point, her aunt questioned the caller, asking why they needed more money. They scared her. Um, they told her that, you know, you have to send this money or we're going to come in and, uh, to your house. Postal inspectors say threats are becoming more common. Many seniors, especially those who live alone, are easily frightened. They may go out to Google Maps and get a description of their house, a paint color, and they will give them a detailed description of their home or a vehicle in the driveway. Once the nightmare starts, it's a nightmare for a long, long time. Sharon Hansen's aunt is now in a retirement facility with no phone and unfortunately no money. Her savings were all lost in this scheme. Postal inspectors recommend that you check in with older loved ones or neighbors and ask if they have received any calls from strangers asking for money. Let them know that no legitimate lottery will ever ask for fees or taxes up front. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. The president of the state senate says despite their attempts to fight drugs in Kentucky, it is not stopping those dealing drugs. And food trucks will be talked about again at City Hall in Lexington. Bill Bryant explains why in the bottom line. Good evening. Kentucky Senate President Robert Stiver says he believes a heroin bill with bipartisan support will be one of the accomplishments of the legislative session that's now underway. But Stivers, who leads the Republican-led Senate, says it's frustrating that drug traffickers seem to move from one substance to another and wreck lives along the way. There are people out there that don't have regard for the law. And they're these profiteers. And they're the ones that are going to move prescription drugs or heroin or any other type of, of illegal drug and don't care that your family, my family, other families are going to have a lot of pain and suffering from those drugs. Those are the people who need to be in jail, period, for long periods of time. Stivers also pushed back against allegations from Democrats that Republicans are using their powerful Senate majority to ram bills through without enough consideration. The full edition of Kentucky Newsmakers airs Sunday morning at 6 on WKYT. It repeats Sunday at 10 a.m. on the CW Lexington. Set your DVR or catch it then. Attorney General and Democratic candidate for Governor Jack Conway has hired a campaign manager for the battle ahead. Adam Sullivan is taking the reins of the Conway campaign after after working and running campaigns around the nation for the last 15 years. Mark Riddle, a veteran of several Kentucky races, he is on board as a senior advisor. Food trucks about to return is an issue in downtown Lexington. A food truck working group will be meeting at City Hall next Thursday. They'll discuss those trucks that some standalone restaurants say creates some unfair competition. The U.S. Department of Agriculture getting ready to cut out a lot of people who have been getting farm subsidies over the years without raising any kind of food or products. Politico reports the federal agency is about to adopt much stricter standards in determining who is to be considered a farmer. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Some changes are on the way for the Scott County school system. In a surprise vote last night, the Board of Education decided not to renew Superintendent Patricia Putty's contract. The news graphic says the vote was unanimous. The school system's website now says that Putty will retire after her contract expires on June 30th of next year.